Hello, I'm Ali and today I will be making a simple playable app for my MMS programming course. As always, I am at the MIT App Inventor and log in with my Gmail account. So for this app, what I need to do is to make use of the ball option in the MIT App Inventor by creating a simple mini golf game. Okay, let's get right into it. So create new project and name it mini golf. In the designer section of this app, we actually need to put in eight components. The first one being the canvas. Now the canvas, we need to adjust the height to 75% and the width to fill parent. For the background of the canvas, instead of choosing just a color, I actually uploaded a picture of a grass. So that would be my background image. Now the canvas will be the background of our game. The second component should represent the golf ball to which I'm going to use an image sprite instead of a ball. I already uploaded a golf image for this image sprite like so. As you can see it's too big for our canvas so I'm going to have to adjust the height and width. The height being 23 pixels and the width being 30 pixels. Additionally, the Z should be 2 instead of 1. The third component should represent the hole, so we're going to use the ball this time. I should rename it to hole instead of ball so that I won't be confused and the image sprite to golf ball. Now let's go back to the whole component and adjust the properties. Z should still be 1 but the radius should be 14 so that it'd be bigger than the golf ball. Next up we need to add in obstacles. For this, we're going to use image sprite again. Again, I've already uploaded an image for the obstacles. Let's rename that as obstacle 1. Now let's do that again. Let's add another image sprite. Choose the obstacle image. And rename that to obstacle 2. Now let's fix their positions to how I'd like them to be. There you go. For our sixth component, let's add in a reset button. As usual, let's put a button then rename it to Reset Button. Let's change the text. Instead of text for button 1, let's do Reset. To change the position of the button, let's go to Screen and then change the Align Horizontal to Center. The next component to add is a label. I want to put in a simple instruction, thus so. I'm going to change the text and write in fling to win. The last component should be in the sensors, which is the clock. In its properties, instead of the interval being 1000, it should be just 100. Now that we're done with the design, let's move into the blocks. First of all, let's decide on how the golf ball should behave. First, when the ball is touched or moved, what should it do? Let's go to golf ball and then choose when golf ball dot flung do. What we want is to set the golf ball heading and speed. So let's go to golf ball and then choose set golf ball dot heading like so and then 
get the set golf ball dot speed. In the dot flung option, we can see a lot of options right here. What we want is to get the heading and the speed. For the speed, we need to use a math block, which is the multiplication. What we want is to multiply the speed to 5. Now our second task is to make the ball bounce when the edge is reached. So let's choose when golf ball dot edge reach do. Let's go back to golf ball and call in golf ball dot bounce. Now you can see there's an edge. Now we get the edge to put right there. Our third task is to make the golf ball stop when a certain speed is reached. So let's go to clock and choose when clock dot timer. We should then bring out an if statement like so. And then bring out a math block that compares two values. What we want to do is to compare the golf ball speed to a certain value. So let's get the golf ball dot speed. And then change the sign to greater than. And then get a number block, an integer block and changed it to 0 0.5. For the then statement, we should go to golf ball once again and then find set golf ball speed to. Let's bring out a math block that subtracts values like so. Now what we want to do is to get the golf ball dot speed again and subtract it to 0 0.5 so I'm just going to copy this one and then put it right there now we still need an else statement so let's go to this blue thing right here and then add an else now this is where we set the golf ball speed to zero. So let's get the set golf ball speed and then the integer block and then zero. That would make the ball stop when it slows down. The next thing we want to do is to make the hole reposition itself when the golf ball hits it. So for this, I already formed the blocks to save the time. So basically, this is a procedure block. I renamed it to new hole and got it from the procedures. Then I went to get this call golf ball move to block in the golf ball section right here and the, and the call hole move to in the hole section. For the X part, I went to canvas to get the canvas.width right here. For the Y, I also got the canvas.height in canvas and minus 30 in the math box. For the X and Y's right over there, I got it from here, random integers. I got the whole dot radius in the whole section right here and then I got that of course in the canvas and then use the sub subtraction block for that in the Y I also did the same thing I used the random integer 
copy the whole dot radius and then to 75. Basically what this does is to reposition the hole when the golf ball hits it. Okay, so what we need to do next is to act to make a set of blocks that would actually trigger this event to work. So first, let's go to the golf ball and pick when golf ball that collided with do and then go to control and then pick the if and then statement. Let's then for the if statement, let's go to math and then use this block. For the first blank space, we need to get the other, which is from right here, and equal it to the hole itself. As so, and for the then statement, we need to get first the golf ball speed right here. We need to set the golf ball speed to zero and then set the golf ball x to whole dot x and then we do the same for golf ball y right here and then whole dot y for the last one we need to pick the call dot call new hole so what these set of blocks does is to trigger this event and make the hole reposition itself when it collides with the ball. Okay, so what we need to do next is to set the behavior of the obstacles when the golf ball collides with it. Simply enough, we go to obstacle, obstacle 1, and then to golf ball, and then set golf ball heading to as so. And then go to math and the subtraction block. For the first space, we get the integer 0. And then for the second, we get the obstacle. Obstacle 1 dot heading. Right, so now we need to do this on the other obstacle. So Let's use this when obstacle dot two dot obstacle two that collided with. And then let's just copy this one, paste, and then remove this. Instead of obstacle one, we choose obstacle two dot heading. Like so. Okay. For the last. Our last task is to set the behavior of our reset button. So let's go to the reset button right here. And then when reset button dot click, do what we put there is simply this one, call new hole. So what this does, what that does is it resets the whole game when you click the reset button. Now let's check if it works.